Oh, designers. Right, today we're going to check out three ways to creatively add depth to your designs in Adobe Illustrator. So first up, we're going to use glass morphism and this effect is perfect for adding depth, but also it's great for making your icon designs look a bit more visually interesting. So here I have a glass style folder created using gradients. There's two objects that make up this folder and I've got this little guy sandwiched in between. So let's select everything, copy, paste in place, and then using the arrow keys, move this out to the right and then copy, paste in place again and move this one out to the right as well. Now let's select the character on the middle one and then go and apply a Gaussian blur effect. Something like six looks about right, but you can change this blur later if you like. Now this character is under the main part of the folder, so I'm going to select that option as well. Go to object, down to clipping mask and select make. And this will crop the blurred character inside that main part of the folder. And we can delete the top bit because we don't need that. So let's get rid of it on both. And now we need to select the direct selection tool and essentially do the opposite. So let's grab this bottom part of the folder and drag this up. It's a bit of a weird shape, but we just need it to cover the opposite part of the character. Now with both selected, press command or control seven to add a clipping mask and then use the arrow keys to nudge these back together. And moving objects around with the arrow keys ensures that when you put them back, they all line up perfectly. Right, let's delete the original character and replace him with our new version. Half blurred and half not blurred. Now let's scale with alt or option and shift to make this a bit bigger. And the last thing we need to do is right click the main part of the folder, go to arrange and bring to front. And this will sandwich the character between the two objects that make up the folder. Now let's try another technique to introduce something called depth of field into a design. And this will keep the focal point of the design in focus, gradually blurring out objects behind and objects in front to convey a sense of depth. I don't know what's going on with my hands here, but essentially this will imitate how a camera works. Okay, so here I have a nice typographic design and a bunch of shapes with a wavy top and a gradient applied. You can see here, if I just pull them apart, that's what they look like, but let's put them back together. And I've sandwiched the typography somewhere in the middle. Now let's switch over to trim view to hide everything outside the bounds of the artboard and holding shift, I'm going to select the wavy line shape at the back and the one at the front, go to effect, down to blur and add a Gaussian blur. And this value might change depending on the dimensions of your design, but this is going to be your biggest amount of blur. So let's go for five in this example. And next I'm going to select the two shapes in from that that are one step closer to the text. And let's go and add a Gaussian blur to these, but make that value a little bit less just because they're a little bit closer to the focal point of this pretend camera. So this looks pretty cool. We've introduced a staggered blur to introduce a bit more depth into the design. Now, just for fun, let's select every other shape and then go down to edit colors and select recolor artwork. And for just these two shapes, let's shift them from orange to a bit more yellow. And with these wavy shapes now going from yellow to orange to yellow to orange, we're introducing more contrast, which is going to really help sell that sense of depth. Right, next up, we're going to look at using color or more specifically gradients to add some depth to a flat logo design. So this logo may look familiar and you can see it's all one solid color. Let's zoom in here and grab the pen tool and just make sure that if it isn't snapping, you turn your smart guides on with command or control U. And we're now going to click and drag to draw a line and then draw this into a shape that covers an entire segment of the line. Now we need to remove the stroke and we need to add a black fill. And if you're thinking, what on earth are you doing, Dan? Don't worry, this will make sense in a second. So let's switch into outline mode with command or control Y, select everything and then grab the shape builder tool. Now holding alt or option, we can click and drag to trim off these excess parts from the shape. And if we then come out of outline mode, you can see we've created a small segment on top of the original logo. Yes, well done, Dan. Now stop waving it around. Next from the window menu, open up the gradient panel. You can see I've got mine docked over here. And if we click on the gradient slider, it adds the default black to white gradient. And we can flip this around quickly and easily or adjust the angle. So for this one in particular, we're going to have the black on the right hand side, select the white on the gradient slider and change the opacity to zero. So it's basically now transparent. But as you can see, everything isn't rosy in the rose garden. Is that a saying or did I just make that up? Anyway, select the shape, go and grab the gradient tool. And now we're going to bring that white swatch inside the edge. Basically, you never want the gradient slider to extend beyond the bounds of that shape. And just zooming out, you can see, well, I've done an oopsie. So let's select everything, grab the shape builder tool, hold alter option, and then click on these individual segments to knock them out. So there we go, all fixed, and we never speak of this again. And because we have a degree of rotational symmetry in this logo, we can actually repeat this without having to do it all again. So let's select the pen tool and click anywhere in the center. So we want to find the center point of the design and then press escape so it leaves a single anchor point. And if we switch back into outline mode, just select that single anchor point. Yep, good, it is still there. 
And we'll come back to that in a moment, but for now let's select our shadowy segment and open up the properties panel. And then we're going to reduce the opacity to make the shadow just a little bit more subtle. And you can do this on the gradient slider or you can just do it here, whichever is easier. And we're also going to change the blending mode to multiply. And this can help blacks blend into colors a little bit better. Right, with our shape and the rotate tool selected, hold down alter option and click on that anchor point in the center. And what I can do is do 360 degrees divided by six, six in this example being the total number of segments and then click copy. And it's created a copy in the exact position rotate around that central anchor point. And we can now repeat this transform with Command or Control D, and we've just saved ourselves doing it manually. So let's do it again to add a bit more depth. We'll do another one here, create the shape nice and easy. We'll add the gradient and put the shadow in the right place. We can adjust the rotation for this one because it's on an angle. Let's adjust the opacity and the blending mode. And with the rotate tool, hold Alter Option and click on that central point. Do 360 divided by the number of copies and then repeat the transform. So we've taken a flat logo design and used gradients to add shadows to introduce more depth. And we can also introduce color and gradients to the main shape to make it especially awesome. And if you'd like to learn more of Illustrator's secrets, then definitely check out the video on screen now or go to dansky.com and check out my full Adobe Illustrator masterclass. But until next time, take care and I'll see you next time.